Uh, my name is Eric Cott. The, the purpose of, uh, of this is, look, we, we obviously uh, learned uh, from um, Patrick this morning some of the basics. A lot of you are knowledgeable about options. Um, Richard did a brilliant presentation about where the economy is. This is kind of where the rubber meets the road. I mean, I'm fortunate to have three wonderful, very talented individuals. And the way we're going to kind of structure this is we're going to talk about hedging, but hedging in an environment where rates are low, and then hedging because uh, obviously clients are worried about uh, potential drops in the market. And either you might be a do-it-yourselfer, or you might be a general contractor and hand off that fiduciary to someone else, maybe in the ETF space. So what I'm going to start off, um, you know, again, I'm not going to talk about myself. You can get that information from the OIC. Uh, you know, I, I operate as a market, uh, uh, as a um, business development and uh, marketing and do research. Um, I would highly encourage you to take a look at our research um, and want to thank the TMX for having us again and excited about the study they did on all of you, the advisor here in Canada. Um, so let me do this. I'll start with Dominic at the end and then uh, go to Chris and then John. Dominic, um, we talked a little bit about oil. I know um, Richard just talked about that. We're at $50. So um, using that as an example, you know, because uh, you have a unique hybrid role as a do-it-yourselfer, but you also sub-advise out. So maybe provide an example on oil. So we've seen oil drop. So maybe there's something like a repair strategy or some other that you can implement as an advisor that's just not maybe above and beyond the covered call. Well, okay, let's just stick with the covered call. Uh, most of the people in this room use covered calls. Most of the people probably use out-of-the-money covered calls. So let's think about uh, flipping the paradigm a little bit. Let's sell an in-the-money covered call, okay? And if we sell an in-the-money covered call, let's say oil, oil's, uh, what, 52 right now? Uh, 52, 53. Let's say I sell a, a, a 45. Uh, I buy, let's say, uh, an ETF in the U.S. like OIL. <coughs> and that's got a problem because it's tied to the future. We all know about the contango and backwardation on that. But, and let's say that 45... Uh, it has intrinsic value of seven dollars, and let's say that that calls nine dollars. So that's two dollars of extrinsic. Because I just hedged my downside to forty-five, actually down to forty-three. However, what's interesting about that strategy is I've got a hedge now. Here's the problem: I've just eliminated the upside bounce. Well, not really. What if I take that two dollars of extrinsic value and I buy a call bull spread? And let's say that call bull spread. Um, I could do uh, 100 by a 102 moneyness, like Chris is talking about. Then I'm getting the same P&L maybe that Rich is getting by owning oil and selling out of the money at 2% at, at out. What am I doing? I'm selling in the money, getting a, a deeper hedge. I'm lowering my break even. I'm using the extrinsic value to get that upside. Now, what's interesting about that strategy, and Pat pointed out, when markets become volatile, we see that the extrinsic value explodes. You can't hedge after a market has become volatile. You can't buy puts, it's too expensive. But with this strategy, it's actually beneficial. You're bringing in money, you're taking advantage of that reverse skew on that lower strike to options. So, so I think it's a good strategy, but I love that strategy. Yeah. Oil. yeah, and I guess it is very um, <coughs> timely given given where oil is.